Good morning. Now 10 before 5. Time to take a look at uh, overnight market activity. And we uh, tap into the talents of Scott Shelladay down there at TMJ and the CME Group in Chicago. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Where do we start this morning with uh, commodity markets? Well, I don't think we got anything unexpected yesterday afternoon, so we're going to open up a little easier. We're basically off about three cents across the board in corn, wheat, and beans. Uh, the volumes yesterday were pretty thin, pretty poor, uh, and that's pretty pretty indicative for this time of the year because our big uh, our big customers kind of out in the field slowly but surely getting some stuff done, and it will be that way probably till the end of uh, end of May. And then to add a little bit of insult to injury, the dollar is a little stronger here this morning too. So it'll be tough sledding to kind of try to get in the green. We're going to need some you know other outside news throughout the day to see if we can turn it around. Yeah, and there just hasn't been any. Heard you on a market rally yesterday afternoon uh, talking about the uniqueness of yesterday's market dynamics with wheat and soybeans up and corn down. What was going on yesterday? Well, you know, we were stronger again yesterday in the dollar. Um, and I think that uh, wheat haven't been beaten up over 30 cents. We're still, I can't get too excited about a five cent rally, but we're still below five bucks. But that was a pretty good showing with uh, the dollar being stronger as well as in the bean market. I think that both the beans and the wheat are uh, <clears throat> probably have the best story out there right now. And that's why corn was kind of lying there. Corn only being down a penny or two isn't that significant, especially at this time of year. But I thought really the, the, the neat part about yesterday was the strength that we could see in the bean and, and the wheat market. But Again, we're going to give some of that back this morning. All right. Well, the uh, ignoring the day-to-day -day trade or even uh, what's going on this month, between now and next fall, what are some of the smart moves a farmer could make in his marketing plan? Well, you're going to have to, re for the first time in a long time, I can't remember how the dollar being this big of a deal because, you know, globally or in a macro sense, with what we're doing with our interest rates here, that's going to affect our price of our exports and who we can sell to. So... Coming on the back of the fact that we've had two good, pretty much, crop years behind us, if we decide to raise interest rates, or at least there's some, some rhetoric about raising interest rates, that's going to make it difficult. So I would, I'd be pretty vigilant about my pre-hedges. Um, if the weather looks like it's going to be, uh, you know, compl uh, complying, because um, we could see an, an interest rate rise here in this country. I don't think we're going to do it, but everybody's talking about it, um, and that could be something that would be difficult to sell our stuff abroad. So keep an eye on the dollar. Keep an eye on weather. It's going to be a weather and a dollar. And then lastly, I said this yesterday in a lot of other <clears throat> stations, that you know we're going to see some money flows that we're not used to here if we see Greece fall out of the European Union. Now, that might not be that big of a deal to a farmer in the middle of Iowa, but when you start to see those money flows moving around and people have to liquidate because they need to put cash here and take cash out of there, we get some kind of weird volatile moves. So keep, keep an eye on that, too. All right, Scott, 30 seconds on the cattle market rest of the week. <laughs> well, cattle took it on the chin. We saw decent capitulation. Um, I think there's some support technically in both the live and feeders, about five bucks lower each. So if, if we have to go a little lower, that's where it will go to. It doesn't look good on a chart right now, so maybe if we can build some support in today and then the, in the hog market, uh, I'd like to see it kind of trend sideways for a couple weeks before I really got too long it and, and started to buy it. All right, Scott Chelody from the floor of the Merck, thank you so much from, uh, for uh, bringing us up to speed this morning. No problem. See you ha next week. Ha have a great day. All right, it is 4.54. We're going to take a break, come back, another check of the forecast, and a preview of what's coming up next on The Valley Today.